Hey, it's Christine. I'm excited to be making a video for y'all today. And uh, the main thing I want to focus on today as I interpret a famous painting by artist Gerhard Richter. And uh, one of the things I want to focus on today as we create is to kind of demystify some art. Um, I really believe that a lot of things can be learned, a lot of things can be taught. However, what we bring to the table is unique. And some people, as we know, can just look at something and represent it, render it realistically, and those people have talent. But what a lot of people may say in their everyday language is, oh, well, that person has talent, that person doesn't, and that's all there is to it. But with art, like anything, it takes work and practice and repetition. and in my experience teaching lessons, I've seen people go from having no confidence to believing they'll never be able to draw anything more than a stick figure to being able to look at objects or people and render them, um, create a work that looks like them realistically. And that may not be the goal of people and you know, either way, but I've seen it happen. So I wanna do a painting by Gerhard Richter and he, he was a German artist and the painting we're going to do is abstract painting 849-3. So he did a lot of abstract work over the course of his career. So a little bit about him. He's a German artist. He uh, was born in, I think, 1931. All right, let me check in on that. Uh, 32. And uh, so he is, um, I've known his work longer than I've known much about his life. Um, so his, his work has gotten me interested in learning more about him. And uh, basically his family lived in Poland um, during the Nazi regime and uh, tried to stay apolitical at that point in time. Um, so he went to Dresden to study art, Gerhard Richter did. And uh, you know, a lot of his work, this is his work that we're gonna be doing today. And basically a lot of his work is gonna, is uh, very abstract. It has a lot of like overlapping color, texture, layering, and um, you know, he wasn't very successful doing any realistic representations. He was actually more successful doing these large-scale abstract works. So this painting is actually, in real life, over 8 feet by 11 feet. And uh, he would take tools that were um, more designed for other uses or perhaps just, you know, repurposed tools like spatulas. He used squeegees. This is a printmaking squeegee, but I use it for paint and uh, other large tools to drag the paint across surfaces and he would let it dry and do it over and over again to create a more layered effect. Um, and a lot of people would look at his work and try to interpret it and say like, oh, this embodies the chaos of the modern world, you know. Um, and what a lot of people, you know, critics have kind of talked about his work as being more this emotional force of color is kind of how it's impactful to us as we look at it. You know, it's in the eye of the beholder, what you want to, what you get from it, right? Um, so anyway, I like this piece a lot. So I'm going to do a representation of it today with y'all. So uh, first we have a palette. I'm just using a tray here and I've got five colors. So I've got a couple of blues. I've got a yellow, a white, and a red. I'm not really concerned with warm and cool colors today. Um, I looked at some of the colors in the piece and there's so much layering involved. I feel like I'm going to get some good mixing happening. Next, our tools. Um, I'm not really gonna use traditional paint brushes for this, although that's totally an option. Um, I may use the squeegee to start off with to kind of cover more ground on the canvas here and then use smaller tools to layer. I've got a nice chip brush here. It's a nice little chip brush. They're really cheap. You can usually find them in multi-packs. These are good for a variety of uh, uses. And one of my favorite painting tools, old credit cards. So these are just like expired gift cards, maybe some that you receive in the mail. Uh, pieces of plastic can go to good use. So I'm gonna, we're gonna paint with these today. Um, and I have a brush if I want one and definitely wanna have some kind of rag. This can get messy. So I like to repurpose old washcloths or towels or t-shirts and just use them for this. And then I don't use paper towels or other things that will get wasted. So. We've got our tools here, and I like to keep some water handy for any cleaning purposes. If I need to clean the big squeegee, I can dip this in there and then wipe it off or use a sink. So, all right, we're going to begin. First, I think I'm going to take, just for fun, just to show you guys, I want to use the squeegee. By, uh, I'm going to take a little bit of 
Let's see. I'm gonna take my chip brush and kind of paint the edge of it. There. Now this might take a lot more paint, in which case I will put more paint on my palette. I'm gonna drag it so that it accumulates on one side. And let's see, this probably won't go far because I'm gonna need more paint. But you never know. This is the beginning of a beautiful friendship. I'm gonna add more paint here. And sometimes your other paint brushes can be useful in just using and adding paint to your larger tools. I'm gonna add some yellow in there. Just mix it up a little. This is also an activity that can be done flat on the ground. Sometimes it gives you a little more surface area, a little more firmness. There's still some on here, so I'm going to drag it up. And what I found is the layering sometimes at the, the first bit of layering. I'm going to scrape this off with the brush here. Might need a little more brush work just to kind of get it spread out. So I'm going to get some water. And then I'm going to dip this in some more. I'm just kind of coat my background a little bit. I like that kind of dry brush streaky look. And so now I'm going to spread it out a little more. Next I'm going to dip it in some yellow. And I see there's a little yellow over here, so I'm going to add some more there. A little bit over here. Let's see. Next, I'm going to take a little white. Looks like there's some white blended in here. You guys look this painting up if you want. This is uh, Abstract Painting 849 3 by Gerhard Richter. He has a ton of them. <laughs> and uh, this one particular, this red color palette, sort of seems to be expressive of some kind of strong emotion. Kind of works well today. There's a lot going on in the world right now. Not to be overly vague, but wherever you are, there's a lot going on. And um, this, this color seems to be appropriate. It is for me. Let's see. I'm gonna begin adding some of these blues that I see here just in the general spot. This is just layer number one. There will be more. And it's an opportunity if you're working on a canvas to do the edges of the canvas to kind of paint those. But if you're working, this, this works beautifully on just flat canvas, recommendation, wallpaper. You can find it at some scrap stores, um, some, you know, people are always getting rid of that stuff. Wallpaper, you can paint the back of it like canvas. You might have to prime it a little bit with some gesso or something. But let's see. I'm going to go ahead and just kind of cover. I'm going to focus on covering this space now. I'm just going to kind of cover it up, get that first layer going. I'm going to get some of that edge work there. We're going to go over here. Yeah, get some of that edging. And some of the little white bits showing through, I, I kind of like that. That's cool. So now, I'm going to wipe off my squeegee a little bit here, kind of keep the tools clean. It's a good idea. I'm fairly consistently not great at that, but I, uh, I'm going to be a good example in the video. Today, right? I've lost a lot of brushes this way and other tools. Okay, now we've got our credit cards or our plastic cards. These are excellent for pushing paint across the canvas. What I'm going to do to start, I'm going to dip it in. Let's dip it in some of this blue. And I'm going to just, and here's a beautiful thing too. It'll scrape away paint that's on the canvas. So sometimes you can reveal colors underneath. I love that kind of effect. So 
So in palette knife painting, there's a technique called scraffito. And what scraffito can do is it's basically taking away, it's subtractive. So it's a subtractive method of painting. So this is in a sense like that. It's taking away and revealing something underneath, which I love kind of building layers and then pulling away some of those layers. There's a little glare there. You can see it's been taken away in some of these areas here. And uh, so the effect is really cool. So we're going to continue to do that. I'm going to add some of this yellow to kind of make a bit of an orange, although it's creating a green there. That's kind of pretty. I like that green. Perhaps I'll interpret this in my own way instead of just copying things. Here, there's a little bit of a white kind of line running through the composition here. So I'm just going to add some there. And let's see, take a little bit of that away. Got a little bit down here. And add a little more red back in the bottom here. You can, of course, change directions. And I've got more red paint because, of course, I need more. Definitely heavy handed with paint, you guys, but you know what? If you don't take the risk, you can't reap the reward. So if you're really hesitant to use a lot of paint, if you can afford to use a little more, go for it. It's totally worth it. It's freeing to not be so concerned with using as little as possible to make it last. Get yourself a whole lot of paint that's a little bit lesser quality, then you feel a little better about it. Paint on cardboard, you know? Don't worry so much about it. I'm adding a little bit more red down below. And again, let's see. We've got. Now that's time. Let's mix a little. I'm going to take a little bit of this white and red. I'm getting to the point where I don't mind just kind of messing up my palette a little bit. And let's see. There's one. Ooh, yeah. There's one big mark across this piece here. And I'm just kind of doing that. Gives something interesting to look at here, you know. There's a thing in uh, studying the composition of art, if you're doing abstract art, you know, granted you might be adding a lot of techniques and layering, or if you like to do splatter painting like Jackson Pollock and drip painting, um, even acrylic pores, uh, those can be really fun compositions, but if we do too much, they can be too busy visually. And so one of the ways we can kind of combat that is to create a few areas in the composition, at least one that's less busy so that your eye has somewhere to rest. So your eye can land somewhere. Um, so if you've ever seen really busy art and you like it, but it's, there's something about it you just aren't quite down with, a lot of times it's because there's nowhere for your eye to rest. There's not that balance or contrast there. All right, I've got a blue, I've got a dark blue that I just kind of added for the heck of it because I wanted to, but I don't really see it in this piece. It's a little bit there. Let's see. Up here, there's an interesting shape. I'm going to kind of, looks almost like a flower. All right, let's see. Kind of intrigued by how this is coming out. I mean, I love how the colors mix in ways with texture that you kind of can't anticipate sometimes. It's pretty sweet. All right, now I'm going to go back to some of this light blue. Okay. Again, it's getting a little bit highly textured. That may be getting close to being done. Let's kind of blend in some of that blue again with the red. Oh, I love that. I like how that's looking. And then if there's ever too much you want to take away, look at that. You get this beautiful orange underneath that blue right here. And you can scratch it away. You can scratch parts of pieces away. Some of these colors. Yeah. 
So you can keep going and going and going, you know? There's always more you can do. I'm gonna add a little more over there, kind of a blend. And I think I'm just about done. Yeah. A little bit of yellow down there, a little bit. with how they turned out. And the more you look, the more you see, you know? There's some subtleties in here. Perhaps it's not got quite enough layering or depth for me, in which case I can go in and add some more yellow there. Oh, I like that. And continue to play with it. And you know, I've made whole pieces before and then just been like, you know what? I'm not happy with any of it. Granted, the layers that you've made, they're not all going to scrape back off, but uh, a lot of times it's more freeing to me to kind of see what the materials do in an unplanned way and then respond to what they do with a little bit of idea that I might get based on what happened. Um, so there's a bit of control and there's a bit of letting go of control. So that's definitely a process that I enjoy working with. Uh, thank you for joining me and painting this Gerhard Richter painting um, with a little twist of Christine over here. Um, this is a 16 by 20 canvas. Um, it would work well on uh, any kind of canvas, loose canvas. Um, it might be interesting to try this on fabric. Um, so I hope that I uh, hope you enjoy this and thank you so much for tuning in. Looking forward to the next one. It'll be a surprise.